far of your your work and uh, this this uh, movement uh, or not not non movement but what you're doing it certainly helped me a lot understand fill in the missing blanks that I was looking for and I want to thank you for that and I think a lot of other people probably would thank you too. Well, um, I, know I, I was just going to say yeah. I want to and I didn't do this and it was remiss of me. I want to thank everyone who has helped by. From last week, I asked that I needed help, and I, mean, I still do need help um, financially. But I want to thank for, for the dozens of people that provided um, donations um, through the UKDA website and just straight through PayPal, because um, I, I do appreciate it. I really do appreciate the thanks. Um, but just as I said when I sent back thank you notes to, to those that had, had given, it, this is something that we're doing together. You know, I, I can't do this without you. I'm playing a part, hopefully, that will help you. So it's a, to me, it's a win-win. Um, my, my dream is that this comes true, but then I can, I can um, help and support you all, but that it is something that is yours and it is ours. So thanks for those comments anyway. Yeah, sorry, keep going. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's exactly exactly it. You're, you're um, I guess a, a, one of another question that I might have here. Yeah, please. Is is if, yeah. you know, if the you know, of course, I don't know if the default or dishonor is probably the better word. If the if these individuals you're sending these pronouncements to and so forth, they, you know, dishonor it. Yep. Um, what. Uh, you know, what happens if they just completely ignore it? What's going to be accomplished if they carry on in their their same uh, pace? What direction would you take after that as a group? Well, uh, good question. And then, is it okay? I'm going to have to keep going because there's a few people who want to ask no. them questions. No so uh, if I can answer this one and just okay. say thanks now, and, and obviously thank you very much, and I hope other questions. But just to answer that question, um, uh, the... The short answer is their system is based on a kingdom of ideas. And whilst they are basing their controls on fraud, force and fear, both force and fear, and even fraud, can only sustain them for so long. Really, what they require from us is belief. If they don't have belief from us, and if they don't convince us that they are the law, that they are the uh, ambassadors of the divine, that they are the rightful... um, rulers then they can't stay in power so when what has happened which is divine notorial procedure or let's be really frank a divine foreclosure when this divine foreclosure is completed and hundreds if not thousands of people are aware of it then their problem is this their idea has been foreclosed on and over time the balance will shift It may take five years, 10, 15, 20. It may take 30 or 40, but they're not going to be around for another thousand years. This, the most powerful ones of them, I'm sure, understand. So there may not be some massive change before December the 21st, 2011. There may not be even a major change next year. But ideas are the most powerful thing. And what is even more powerful than an idea is a model of ideas, a system of ideas. And what is the most powerful is when a system of ideas is embraced and believed by thousands at a grassroots level. That is an unstoppable force. And that is what is Eucadia. So thanks again. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to call in uh, Ron. I see Ron there. Ron, hi. How are you going? Hey, Frank, how you doing? Uh, I'm getting the hang of the technology. (laughs) Hey, great. (laughs) Hey, you know, last week there was this uh, fellow in England. He was an Irishman. I think he calls himself John Anthony Hill. But his his, uh, nickname is Mudad Deeb, right? Right. And And he beat the Crown attorneys over a DVD that he sent to support the allegation that the four guys in the 7-7 uh, scheme, well, they were innocent, right? Right. But he beat them because he found out that the Stone of Destiny was stolen in 1950 or 51 
by four Scottish guys that took it back to Scotland, right? Yeah. And they left behind a phony stone. But yep. QE2 was um, coronated on the phony stone, right? That's right, yes, yes. So <laughs> he beat them because of that. Now, my question, well, kind of my question and my my comment is, what in the hell does the stone of destiny got to do with divine right of being a king? Well, well, it goes back to Book of the Green Race. He has an answer. But do you not also have to belong to the bloodline? Yes, you do. The, so is QE2 related to the bloodline of David? They claim it, yes, and they certainly claim it on the flag. Yep. I don't. I think it's pretty vague. Well, after reading the Green Race, I don't think they're even in the running. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But uh, but they've been uh, very loyal, dutiful um, receivers in the system. So, you know, they got the gong to take over the business. Yeah. Which started in 1066 by an imposter. Correct. Yep. Yep. So where is the stone of destiny today? Do you know? That is an excellent, excellent question. My personal belief is that they haven't found it. That's my personal belief. Oh. But then again... um, and the reason I say that is that if they had found it, they would certainly uh, use it. But um, uh, I don't believe that it is a stone. I've always believed that it is a very, very large crystal. Oh. Huh. Um, at one time you had mentioned there was a, a stone or something that got buried in D.C. It, was that the stone from Ebola? Um, well, the the, um, the stone of destiny. So they call it the scone stone because they they they're trying to pass off a piece of sandstone as Jacob's pillow. Right. And you know what Jacob's pillow is, yes. Yep. So uh, it comes. It, the way it goes is this: the Israelites were saved from Egypt uh, in their imprisonment by a leader that was sent to them uh, of what's called the the David or the Daviz. And the word viz, uh, we know, comes into vizier, visor, advisor, and is code for uh, druvid. So druviz, druvid, it all seems to be from the same. So the house of David is the house of druids, the house of wizards, the house of viziers, so I guess you can make a pretty, pretty simple connection that it's also the Holy House. Mm? Okay. Um, but as a separate line, they were given uh, or they took or they possessed a number of standards. And one of them was the Stone of Destiny. And the Stone of Destiny was a way of validating their authenticity. And all the kings then were crowned on the Stone of Destiny. All the Davids, all and they, these kings, by the way, under the Israelites, were called messiahs. So, to be a messiah, technically, to be a messiah, you have to be of the blood of the Davids, the Davids, the viziers, to be a messiah. You just can't roll up and say, "Hello, I'm the messiah." <laughs> right? Well, that's what they did. Sure. Well. This is back to fraudism. They truly believe they're messiahs. They have no idea of their own rules. No idea of their own rules. But uh, it's the end of messiahs, and as of the 12th of June, it is the end of the age of blood. It doesn't matter where I was born into the Kulian, the Holly, the David. It doesn't matter whether you uh, are related to the Queen of England. It doesn't matter whether someone comes along and says, I have first right by blood. Blood is over. I am like you, you are like me. Whether my skin is white, green, black, yellow, it doesn't matter. That's over. What matters is if you and I and all on this call are competent. That's what matters. And respectful and are willing 
to be stewards of this world and not destroyers of this world. So sorry for the uh, the bit of speech there, Ron, but thank, thank you. Um, I've got to keep going, but do you, okay. is there anything else you want to add before we, I keep going with other question people? Um, I, I wanted to really, I was trying to drive that back into the um, the authority of government. Where do they get their authority? And, and I'll and I'll get back in the queue if you want me to. Yeah, that's right. The three, the three Fs, Ron. They, they, ultimately, there's the real authority and there's the claimed authority. The, 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 the true authority is that a government is nothing more than a franchise. A it's franchise nothing more than a trust. Creator. A trust. It's a creator. trust. Right. right. So uh, under that, it all comes back to the master trust. The master trust is Romanus, or was, I should say. The master trust in the system was Romanus Pontifex, which is now history. Yep. The the real way that they stay in power is the three Fs. Mm. All right, Ron. We'll, okay. um, we'll, we'll keep going with the question. Thanks again for for your comments. One sec. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, uh, I'm going to, um, um, we've got a number here, so I'm going to go to um, Central Pennsylvania. I see you listed there. I hope I can unmute you. Um, well, I'm trying. Ah, there we go. Hello, Central Pennsylvania. Can you hear us? Hello, Central Pennsylvania. Can you hear us? No? I'll come back to you. I'll try and get through these because I know a number of people have, have uh, done Star Hash. Okay, guest uh, um, Gretchen. Um, is there, but, you know, it's guest 23. I'll just quickly unmute you. Hello, guest 23. Can you hear us? Hello, Frank. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you going? Hi, this is the first time caller. My name is Roberto from uh, Canada. Hi, Roberto. And, hi. And um, I just wanted to make uh, a few comments, I hope you don't mind, in regards to what you were speaking on in regards to the Illuminati and the New World Order. Yeah. Um, and I ask you to have, have an open mind and um, just consider the possibility that much of the disinformation out there is put out there by old guard and the old world order in um, basically victimizing the Illuminati who the true Illuminati not the false Illuminati um, who, are, who have been resisting the old world tyrannical powers um, for thousands of years including That's the, a good idea. I think that's a, a, a good take on it. Yeah, uh -huh. there's no problems. I have no problems with that as a thought. We'll see why would the old world order, who have everybody by the throat and have enslaved people of, by their own will, why would they want or need a new world order? It would be the perfect um, false prophets to um, basically labelize um, a group that's trying to create such um, such a thing, which is just a, basically an illusion, and um, in order for them to maintain their current power structure. Sure. Uh, in, in actual fact, and, and a lot of the misconception comes because originally the real Illuminati had started the Knights Templars or the Jesuit orders or the Freemasons, but... R Roberto, just had a quest, request. Can you can you speak up a little bit just because some sure. people can't hear you? Sure, sure, sorry. Oh, great, thank you. Um, initially, they had created those orders to resist the old world order, like the Knights Templars and the Jesuits, to infiltrate the Catholic mm. Church and they led a lot of the revolutions in France um, uh, against the royal, um, you know, families of Europe. Yep. And um, so it's, um, they have actually been fighting for a lot of the things that you stand for in, in, in actual fact. They, they believe in a meritocracy, um, not on a bloodline, uh, yep. per se, where the privileged... Um, are elevated in society with no merit at all. Yep. And, and, and many of the philosophies that they preach basically are in line with many of the things that you say, and that's what drew me to you. Um, 
and um, One Heaven in Eucadia is. Um, well, can I? 